Before we start with the content of this video, I have to deliver to you the news broadcast bulletin. The news of the day in Shadowlands and what happened in the last couple of days. This broadcast is sponsored by the Newport Jerky Company. You buy one bag of mixed bags for $3.55 and you get one for free. This is an amazing deal. I was able to barter for you guys to show my appreciation. So go ahead before they run all out. Now on to what's new. Remember, as I made my video about what to do in the first weeks, that the Dark Moon Fair is coming to town this weekend. It's Sunday and the Dark Moon Fair is available. What do you want to do in the Dark Moon Fair? No, those are children fair games. You have to go to the Dark Moon Fair to get the top hat. You get the top hat for 10 tickets, grind a bunch of them and use them whenever you want to turn in your dailies, whenever you want to turn in your weeklies, anything that gives you reputation, you're gonna do it with your top hat. Then, talking about reputation, we have to talk about the Mo again. Because turns out that the events in the Beast Warren, the weekly event in the Beast Warren, is not actually going to be a weekly. This was particularly problematic because the different types of bosses in the Beast Warrens were four. So if the event was actually weekly, it would have meant that you only got the chance to kill a boss once a month. And because there, there is a boss that drops a mount, it would have meant you only have one chance a month, one week a month, to, to grab that mount. Turns out Blizzard is using the Nyalota tier invasions the old god invasions from BFA, so it's gonna be a bi-weekly event. Every time before the weekend, basically, it's going to switch a different boss and you're going to be eligible to kill it again for more reputation, more Stygia, and then more loot. The boss that drops the mount is still the same, the Gorge Shadehound. Now, where's the bad news in this? The bad news is in the slowpokes that did not get to Ambivalent before, basically, yesterday, which meant they missed out on the chance to kill the Gorge Shadehound. Because if you log right now, if today you get to Ambivalent, you will see basically this. You will see that the Ant available is going to be for the Soul Eaters, not for the Gore Shadow Hunt anymore. So you will have to wait two more weeks before the chance of a mount comes back in the MO. Now, don't forget that the best way always to get reputation in the MO, assuming you still care about reputation in the MO, assuming you still want to get to tentative appreciative and then higher until you can get your sockets and your better rewards is always to get to the last part of the completion of your daily stop join a raid group do all the rares and special events whatever your grade group is doing and then once you're at rank 5 eye of the jailer attention or close to rank 5 you can go back and complete all the dailies because the chunk of attention of the eye of the jailer comes with the completion of the daily quest listen to me well I'm even getting closer. With the completion of the quest, not the turn-in. You can stop at 9 out of 10 of a daily, go do your rare hunting, and then come back at rank 5 and complete that last 10 out of 10 part. This way, you won't care about the attention of the Jailer because you're already at 5. So instead of doing, for example, 2 ranks of attention of the Jailer, doing dailies, and then go farm rares, you can farm rares all the way up to rank 5 and then finish your dailies. That is going to net you, at the end of the day, way more reputation. But this was all for the news of the day. So we have to talk about the important stuff. So a big thank you to the Newport Jockey Company and their amazing deal on the mixed bugs. Very, very tasty. So let's move on now on to the actual content of the video. Here's the thing, guys. Soon enough, some guides about raids are going to come out. As I mentioned, they're not going to be a step-by-step -step guide. There are plenty of other avenues in which you can find these type of guides, which I will also point you at. They're going to be more in-depth, more specialized for each role, regarding things like cooldowns, defensive cooldowns, offensive cooldowns, healer externals, how you plan them, how you should move, and all that, and all that sort of stuff. But I also have to think about you guys, not just about what I want to do. I also have to think about... You know, the average age of my viewer, the average IQ of my viewer, what they could understand from a raid encounter. Not to mention, not many of you, not all of you, are going to enjoy raiding, right? Some of you won't raid at all. Some of you will just raid up to Heroic, so not even Mythic. So, I thought this was the perfect fit for you guys. So, Tactical Air Horse over at itch.io, for the boomers, by the way, itch.io is a website for users to host their individual games and user tactical errors made an entire mini game based on Castel Natria bosses. You can literally go in, choose the boss you want to fight, 
and then play the minigame. This is actually very helpful, you know. You know, for kids with not very elevated understanding of more serious problems, when you see these type of mechanics shown to you in a minigame version, it's actually very simple to understand. When you play this, when you play Fruitwing, the brother of Shriekwing, and you see the mechanics in the game, once you actually listen to a guide or read the mechanics of the fight, you can more easily tie this to the actual boss. You haven't played the boss yet, you haven't played the beta, you haven't even seen the abilities, but playing this minigame and all the bosses, and actually beating all the bosses, not that it's important to beat them, but just for, I don't know, bragging rights, you will actually get to understand the boss much more. It is actually helpful for, you know, less hardcore, you know, less invested raiders. Of course, more, you know, obviously, more hardcore raiders are going to be way more up to date with the mechanics of the bosses. They have played in the beta, they have read the mechanics and the guides are ready. They are the type of players, like myself, who would go to, for example, Warcraft logs to learn about a boss fight. Wouldn't wait for a guide to come out to learn how the boss works. I would just look at Warcraft logs and look at what someone else is doing to learn how the boss works. Particularly since I'm in Europe and I'm gonna see people from the US do it first. So this is even going against my interests because I'm gonna be making guides. I'm telling you that if you wanted, you shouldn't even watch guides. Not even for myself. And just learn them yourself. But, you know, as usual, you need some spoon feeding, so you're still gonna watch guide instead of doing your own research. So I'm delivering to you Castle Pineapplia, the minigame from Tactical Air Horse, to learn the boss fights before you even get to fight them and before you even get to watch guides about the encounters. This is completely free. You can play it in browser or you can download it for free. You can donate. You should donate, given the effort put into this amazing minigame. This way, when you actually get to see boss mechanics, you will remember. Oh yeah, this is the same thing from fucking Lady Pinerva Darkfruit that I kept wiping on. So that's the first introductory help for the upcoming raid tier of Castonatria. Now, on to something a little bit more standard, less uh, flamboyant. I'm going to point you, again, to Mythic Trap. The last video about this was over almost two weeks ago, so now is a good time to reiterate this point, especially because now it has been further expanded. Mythic Trap is the site that is going to tell you everything about dungeons and raids. It is getting constantly updated. By this point, all the dungeons are fully released in guides, as well as almost all the bosses are fully released in their guides. So this is what I mean when I say I don't want to give you a step-by-step -step guide and just give you the rundown of all the bosses and all the mechanics. Because when you look at something like this, it is just perfect for the type of content you would want to look at. If you want a guide for Mists of Tirnasit, you don't even need to look at a video. Just watch and read, if you have learned to read yet, the guide for the Mist Dungeon. You go there, you can look every single boss, the recommended path for trash, you can choose between quick strategies and detailed strategies, and then all of the trash mobs, all of their abilities, gifts with what the abilities do, whether or not you should be afraid of it. This is very helpful for everyone who wants to get an easier rundown about these mechanics. Of course, when I will make a video about Mist of Seed for healers, I can tell you which abilities are good to use externals on, which abilities the tanks should kite, or no, which packs the tanks should start kiting, all the skips and all of that, but this type of content, like Mythic Trap, is very very good to give you the initial coat of paint to understand the dungeon. Granted, you have gotten two weeks of Mythic Zeros, you should have learned it already, but, but you have literally seen in my last video DPS constantly failing mechanic in Theater of Pain. So that is still definitely going to continue happening. So you don't want to be that guy. You don't want to be that guy that got laughed at in my videos for sucking at mechanics. Now, where Mythic Trap is going to give you a lot more videos, a lot more video footage for you to understand, if you are a little bit more older school, if you want to read a little bit more, I know, why am I even telling you this? Reading in 2020, but if you do, you should just go to Tank Notes. Tank Notes, by its name, is still going to be primarily focused around tanks, but it is still helpful for everyone. It is going to give you the same rundown of all the dungeons in an informative manner like Mythic Trap, but it's going to add a few more things. It's going to have a little bit more tips and tricks and what you should do. Certain pathing options are also going to be shown to you. Certain skips as well are going to be mentioned in, in Tank Notes. And then, of course, they will have some tips and some extra attention given to tanks. Right now, Tank Notes is only up and fully working for Mythic Plus. Eventually it will be for raids as well. 
and Mythic Trap is for both raids and Mythic Plus. So those are two very good resources that you can look at for dungeons. So these were the useful resources you can check for the upcoming release of raids and Mythic Plus. There are more, you know, in-depth things you can go and look at. I mentioned already multiple times Warcraft logs, even your own character and the way you can set up your character through things like Simulation Craft and Raid Bots. We will go, or rather I will go and you will listen through this in a few days, specifically Warcraft logs, but for that to happen we actually need to have numbers, we need to have data logged into Warcraft logs, raids need to be open, Mythic Plus need to be open, otherwise we can't really talk about anything other than beta logs from a month and a half ago, and that's not very relevant. But these are very nice starting point for the less invested players, the less hardcore players. These are actually going to help you quite a bit. From Castle Pineapple to learn the raid encounters firsthand before you even get into the actual raids, as well as these sites, Tankonos and Mythic Trap for dungeons. Of course, then you have time to go even more in depth. People who already know all this stuff, they can look at actual high tier mythic plus players to give them way more in-depth tips you can go and check yourself their runs for example but this is just a start this is just the basic coat of paint for you to understand all these encounters and these dungeons and you know you have seen from my last video the absolute state of some dps players and this is almost two weeks into the expansion so these type of fails will continue happening people making mistakes will continue happening it's not that just because the dungeons are out already, then people already know everything. Now, to close the video and to keep talking about numbers, let's go back for a minute or two to the video of yesterday about the current state of DPS specs. I read the comments, guys, I read your thoughts about the buffs and nerfs. I have to point out, first of all, for people who are not used to this type of theory crafting, they don't watch, they don't follow this scene, these are sims on a 4-6 to six minute timer, for a raid encounter, pure single target, stationary enemy, using everything you would expect from a raid. So all raid buffs, your flask, your food, your pre-pot, your second potion, your augment rune, and it is a pure single target fight. So this doesn't mean much of anything for AoE, much of anything for Mythic Plus, where it isn't just AoE, but also about burst AoE, and how effective you can use it, how quick the ramp up of your AoE can be in Mythic Plus. So this doesn't mean that whoever is, the, whoever is at the top in this is going to be at the top in the expansion as a whole. Definitely not. I'm not falling for your excuses though, guys. This, uh, my spec hasn't been OP in a long time, therefore now it deserves to be OP. I don't, I'm not falling for it when it comes to Unholy DK, when it comes to Balanced Druid, and I heard it as well for Maxmanship. I can, I can excuse it when it comes to Havoc Demon Hunter because they truly have been OP for two full expansions in a row. Not just their damage, but their kit as a whole for Mythic Plus, so that, that is something you could say is deserved, but, but the other specs, I'm not letting you off the hook with that, because as I mentioned, Unholy has the problem of having Unholy Blight doing way too much DPS for single target, and Unholy Blight is an AoE talent in an AoE talent row. You know better than me for your own spec that when you have a talent row entirely based around AoE, it's gonna be shit in single target. It's not that you're gonna have very good options for single target in that row, it's gonna be trash. Think about a fire mage who has to choose between flame patch, conflagration and living bomb. That's shit for single target, there is no way around it. Giving Unholy DK an AoE talent in a row of AoE talents that can give you a 12% damage increase in single target is not, is not in line with life, you know? This allows them to have a talent that is stronger than a legendary for single target, while they can still swap when they go in AoE situations to still be just as strong in AoE. It just gives them too much freedom to choose their talents. It's not a problem for Unholy DK, it's a problem that the other specs don't have that option. They don't have that luxury. If you are a Destruction Warlock, you have to choose between Inferno, Fire and Brimstone and Cataclysm. Those are garbage single target talents. None of these talents is going to give you a major increase in single target damage. You know, this is an AoE row, and I only use it in AoE. My single target options in this are limited. That's the problem with the Unholy situation. When it comes to Balanced Druid, the only thing I can let Balance off of is on the fact that Convoke the Spirits is purely RNG. Yes, you are guaranteed your Full Moon cast inside of Convoke and your Star Surge is cast. The problem is, you don't know who is hitting what. So yes, as long as the fight is pure single target, 
your Convoke is going to have 100% effectiveness. But in all the fights of Castornatria, where there are going to be a main boss, a very high priority target spawning, and then 5 or 6 little shits running around, if you Convoke there, your Convoke might be as strong as a single Star Surge. Because effectively everything else is hitting targets you don't want. That's the only, I guess, saving grace for other specs. The fact that the Convoke the Spirits for Balanced Druid is only very powerful for single target. Because you can always guarantee that the RNG of Convoke is always going to hit the target you want. And for AoE, going Kyrian, for example, for Balanced Druid is just better. Again, that doesn't let you off the hook. That's not an excuse. Convoke the Spirits is doing 90,000 damage in a single button. That is not possible. There are Covenant abilities of specs that are doing 20,000 damage on the same cooldown. It's just not feasible. It needs to be toned down. Same goes for Shadow Priest. Doesn't matter, guys, how much you try to shill that Shadow Priest is a single target spec or a stacked AoE spec. They are still one of the only specs, together with Balance Druid and Affliction, that can multi-target targets that are spread. It doesn't matter if your focus as a Shadow Priest is single target. So is Marksmanship, except that Marksmanship cannot hit targets that are 20 yards away from each other. Neither can BM, neither can Demonology, neither can Destruction without Havoc, neither can Elemental Shaman. You are still a spec that can spread cleave, that can dot multiple targets, can refresh their dots if they are close enough with Void Bolt, can tag them all with Shadowy Apparitions, and you are still doing one of the hardest and highest single target damage in the game. Not to mention, you also have one of the highest funnel damage in the game. So the current damage of Shadow Priest is also very problematic. Yes, I do agree though with Announcement Shamans and and their Leave Us Alone slogan. I'm fine with that. I agree. And I can't get too much into the warrior problem. I've seen some exasperated warriors complaining about the good old warriors scale meme. But it's the truth. You can't make warriors top the DPS meters now because otherwise they will turn into an abomination later on and they will need to be nerfed. This is a problem on Blizzard's end. They have to fix the way the spec works, but as long as it works like this, that's the current state. Park your warrior and play it in a year. I wouldn't be too worried about destruction being that low. I've seen some tentative warlock players worried about the state of warlocks. Destruction strength was never single target to begin with. Cleave and high burst is pretty high value in Castornatria, so destruction can be very useful in that niche. And I'm also not surprised at the surprise of people looking at Frost Mage. You know, throughout the beta, not just my videos, but most other players you guys have watched in the beta, you will have seen 90% of mages being Frost, Frost always topping the meters, together with Shadow Priest, together with Subtlety Rogue and Marksmanship Hunter. The problem is that as time went on, Frost got nerfed and nerfed and nerfed, while Arcane got buffed and buffed and buffed, and so did Fire. So by the end of the beta and the start of the expansion, we had a switcheroo. It's Arcane that went on top and Frost that went at the bottom and Fire Mage went all the way up close to Arcane. I do believe right now Mage is the most complete of all the options you can have as a DPS. They are close enough to each other to all be viable and they have very different niches, very different power points. The consistent cleave of Frost Mage with Split in Ice and their stacked AoE is very powerful. Arcane, they have the highest, I think, or the second highest single target burst in the game. It can go over 14,000 DPS single target at 184 item level, which is super high. For comparison, Fire Mages, for example, get to 11. And Frost, of course, with no burst, stays at 8.5. So that is a clear niche for Arcane. They also have their possibility of execute damage, extra execute damage with Arcane Barrages, as well as stacked AoE and stacked cleave on four targets with Arcane Barrage hitting four targets. So I would be pretty happy if I were a mage. I haven't mentioned Windwalker because there isn't much to mention about Windwalker. Windwalker is in a normal spot, is in an, is in an average spot. I mean, I'm, I'm playing a monk myself, so I think it's doing fine. Their AoE is very good. Their burst with the addition of the baseline Zhuan, and if you're going Kyrian, with Weapons of Order is super strong, and then if you're going something like Necrolord, they have much more sustained damage in AoE every minute which is very easy to pair up with every single charge of Storm Earth and Fire, so they are very healthy. And no joke, I haven't mentioned Feral because I don't have anything against Feral Druids, I've just seen very few of them. And I've just seen very few of them, 
and they haven't been doing well enough in live, at least when it came to AoE, and the sims are not doing so high right now to make me think anything different than what they were in BFA, which is low end. Not just because of their damage, but because they are a melee DPS. Castanatria is not very melee DPS friendly. You will want less melee DPS, probably even than usual, so you will start shrinking down to the bare necessities. Havoc because of the debuff, Windwalker if you don't have a tank or a healer for the debuff, a warrior for the shout and the rallying cry, and maybe a rogue because of an immunity, or a death knight because of anti-magic zone. You're already at 5 mini DPS, why do you bring a feral druid? That's why I'm not that excited, I don't have anything to say about feral. So this was all, closing the video of yesterday with a few more points in here, Hoping there is still anyone to listen to this, and you're not all gone playing Castle Pineapplia by now. There is just a few days before the reset, there is gonna be a few more videos about getting ready for Mythic Plus, about some, you know, setups you can go for Mythic Plus and for raids, the weak auras for raids, the weak auras for Mythic Plus, and a few other things. And then, as the raid goes on, as Mythic Plus goes on, as I progress in raids in Mythic Plus, as you do, we will go on and talk about that. So, as I leave, tell me in the comments how much you have been dying to Castle Pineapplia. Don't be embarrassed, nobody's gonna laugh at you, except for me. I reserve that honor only to myself. So, see you guys soon, and in the meantime, I forgot survival again. <laughs>